apply them. Magnets have got a variety of applications. But for a start, let's think about this. You are in a laboratory with some coins in your hands. Then you see a certain beaker with some sand in it. You stand beside it, looking at the sand. Then accidentally some coins fall into that sand. You don't notice that those coins have fallen into the sand. So you start looking for those coins around the lab. Then you remember that maybe they might have fallen into the sand. So you look around the lab, try to get the magnet and you bring it close to the surface of the sand and luckily your coins are found. They get attracted to the magnet you put above the sand. This is Z Online School. In this video, we'll be looking at the application of magnetism. We are going to do it in a systematic way. And by the end of this video, you're going to know how magnetism is used in a relay, in an electric bell, and in a read switch. At the end of this video, we've got some bonus tips for you. So stay till the end and get the maximum value from this video. We are going to start with a relay switch. What is a relay switch? A relay switch is just an electric switch that uses electromagnetism to either break or form an existing circuit. The picture here shows an example of how a relay switch will look like in real life. Knowing that we're talking about the applications of magnetism, we know magnets will be used, but you can see in this definition we have the word electromagnetism. Basically, electromagnetism is just the use of electricity to bring about magnetism. Now, how does the relay switch work? We're going to use this diagram here. We are first going to look at each of these parts and just say a brief about what they'll be doing. We're going to start with this fixed contact here. This fixed contact just means a part in the relay which doesn't move. Likely, there will be a certain cable connected to this part going to a certain part of a circuit. This is a movable contact, which is the part which will be moving after magnetism has helped do something in this diagram. This is another fixed contact where we'll have likely another cable leading to another circuit. Now, we've got the core here. This core is just a cable that is twisted around a rounded object, which is likely a magnetic material. This here is our rounded object. It's a magnetic material, meaning after some time when electric current passes through this core, the magnetic material will become a magnet. That's what we call electromagnetism the electricity making a certain material a magnet. Don't worry, it will be looked at under the topic of electromagnetism. Here we've got some magnetic contacts. One is here and another one here. We've got another magnetic contact here. And these are the parts we have in this diagram. Now, how does this relay switch work? This core will cause magnetization of the magnetic material inside this solenoid, which is the scientific name of this core, causing this magnetic contact here to become magnetized. Now, since we have two magnetic contacts here, this magnetic contact which is not magnetized will be attracted to the magnetic contact which is magnetized. Therefore, this arm here will move and cause this magnetic contact to push the movable contact towards the other fixed contact which was not part of the circuit. This might sound very long, but it's actually a very simple principle. Likely, the electric current will stop passing through this circuit and start passing through the other circuit. This is how a relay switch works on the principle of magnetism. Now, we're going to look at an electric bell. An electric bell is just a bell that rings by pressing a button. Instead of hitting it manually, 
the button does the work for you. Now, we're going to know what the button does after you press it. This diagram shows the inside of an electric bell. This part here make it possible for an electric bell to work properly. You know that the cause here will just cause this magnetic material to become a magnet. So from this terminal, the electricity starts passing, gets the adjusting screw, passes through this contact here, through the spring, into the soft iron. Comes here, and now when it begins to pass through this magnetic material, it begins to magnetize it. Now, when this magnetic material becomes fully magnetized, what happens is that this soft iron will get attracted towards the magnetic material. Likely, this whole thing here will be called the electromagnet. So, the soft iron gets attracted to the electromagnet. And when that happens, this striker hits the bell. Now, you should note that when that happens, these contacts will no longer be together. Therefore, the circuit here that we were forming is now broken. Therefore, what happens is that this electromagnet begins to lose its magnetic properties. And when it loses them fully, this soft iron will be put back to the adjusting screw because of this spring here. And that's how an electric bell will keep on ringing and ringing and ringing. Because this soft iron will get attracted, after some time, it will get back to its original position. And again, because the current begins to pass through, it will come back. And this process will keep repeating as long the switch is pressed. Magnetism also is used for the reed switch. A reed switch is just a switch that is made up of two or more ferromagnetic reeds. In this diagram, the reeds are these parts here. This is one reed and this is another. So for this reed switch, there are only two reeds in it. Now, you should note that these reeds are in an airtight glass envelope. Now, how does a reed switch work? A reed switch also works on the principle of magnetism because there's a use of a magnet. An open reed switch will likely be represented like this and it will obviously look like this. The reeds are not touching, meaning the circuit here is broken. And likely what this means is that the magnet is far from the reed switch. Now, when we have a reed switch that is closed like this, you can see the difference. This one is open, this one is closed. It means a magnet is very close to the reed switch and therefore this property of a reed switch being able to close and open due to a magnetic force makes it able to be used in circuits for example in alarm systems a reed switch can be used to switch on an alarm if the door is open now let's get to our bonus tip section the first tip today is just a conclusion on what we've looked about in this lesson. You should be able to notice that magnets are applied in many things and it might not be possible to look at all of them in just one video. However, you should be able to get familiar with how magnets are commonly used in basic appliances. For example, we've looked at a relay switch, an electric bell, and a reed switch. These three appliances can be used to get an idea of how magnetism is applied. The second thing you should know is some other applications. In case you are asked to list five applications of magnetism, you only have three. The electric bell, the reed switch, and the relay switch. Why will you source the other two? In this part of the video, we are going to give you some other applications. Magnetism is applied in all these five fields we're talking about. It's used in magnetic storage. Usually, these are just hard drives. Hard drives in a computer use magnetism to store their information. Other magnetic storage you'll find are magnetic tapes.
Nowadays, they are not so common. However, they also use the principle of magnetism to operate. Another use is the electromagnets, which were used in the relay switch and the electric bell. Electric motors are another application of magnetism. They will also be looked at in other topics. The loudspeaker uses magnetism to operate. And there are also some circuit breakers which use magnetism. Thanks for reaching to the end of this video. Look around your home and see if you can see magnets being used anywhere. Don't forget to check your fridge to see if they are used to stick some notes on it.